apologies i'm just having a few technical issues on this side i'm just trying to get the slides to move along there we go Good. okay so as i said thank you for joining us today we're here to introduce the climate and energy benchmark which is a collaboration between cdp and the world benchmarking alliance so today we'll cover what the climate and energy benchmark is and what to expect as a company who will be assessed the project is based on the assessing low carbon transition methodology, so we will look at this and the scores generated in more detail. We will then look at how the company assessment will be conducted, what will happen with the scores and how companies can get involved. So as mentioned, CDP will be collaborating with the World Benchmarking Alliance to deliver the Climate and Energy Benchmark and WBA are with us on the call today to introduce themselves shortly. The automotive sector assessments conducted this time will form the third publication under the Climate and Energy Benchmark, representing 30 of the most significant companies for the sector globally, which is an increase in sample from the 25 assessed last year. We're assessing and scoring all companies regardless of their disclosure to CDP. This is an implementation of the ACT automotive methodology, which was developed in conjunction with technical input from the sector in 2016 and updated in 2019. This benchmark is an implementation um, of the methodology, as I said, and the ACT initiative which developed the methodologies is founded by CDP and ADEM, the French Environment and Energy Management Agency, and the ACT initiative is recognised by the Global Climate Action Agenda with UNFCCC. So I will now pass to my colleague at the World Benchmarking Alliance, Vicky Sins, to introduce the work that they do and the connection with this project. Over to you, Vicky. Thank you, Claire. Yes, good morning, everyone. My name is Vicky Sins, and as Claire mentioned, I work for the World Benchmarking Alliance, where I lead our decarbonization and energy transformation work, of which the Climate and Energy Benchmark is one of our publications. Um, as a way of background, uh, the World Benchmarking Alliance was found with the idea that we want to create and build a movement where we measure and incentivize uh, business impact towards the sustainable future that works for everyone. Um, and next slide, please. When we looked at when we initially started, uh, we looked at the uh, sustainable development goals. And as everyone hopefully knows or is aware, those were written for uh, countries, but not for the private sector. And hence, when we started the work, we uh, decided that when we need to speak around um, the transitions and when reaching the sustainable development goals, we actually need to start talking about what transformational change would be needed in order to reach the sustainable development goals and hence the world benchmarking alliance or wba in short uh, has developed this framework which is this wheel where which has uh, talks about seven system transformations of which the decarbonization and energy one is highlighted in yellow uh, of which the climate and energy benchmark that we're currently talking about is the the tool as i mentioned Furthermore, we also believe that the other transformations, and I won't go into details, but that you see here in this wheel, need to be addressed if we want to reach that sustainable future that works for everyone. Uh, it's also important to highlight the social system, which you see at the heart of this wheel, um, because this um, benchmark, which we do for the automotive sector, will also uh, include uh, the corporate human rights benchmark assessments, which is part of the social transformation that you see here in the heart of the wheel. Next slide, please. So when, first of all, we developed the transformation wheel, the seven system transformations, and then we said, um, as we said, we want to build a movement which creates private sector action and incentivize the private sector to take actions to reach the sustainable development goals. And then when we, de we had to identify what companies we wanted to have in scope uh, for our benchmarks, and we used a concept called Keystone Companies. And what is Keystone Companies? Keystone Companies are not necessarily the largest companies, but these are companies which we believe have a disproportional influence on the structure that they function in. This could be in their supply chains, this could be in, the, in a certain region or country, but it, it identify themselves by that they dominate, control or connect or have a, a significant influence. 
And hence, these are the companies that we believe are crucial to be included in, uh, in our benchmarks because they are the ones that need to drive the transformational change that we want to see. Um, in January this year, during Davos, we launched a list of the 2000 most uh, influential companies, which we call the SDG 2000. And um, the companies currently on the on the call, um, you are uh, uh, one of those in, uh, uh, keystone companies because you will be included in one or more of our benchmarks. And um, we've launched the list because we really want to engage with yourselves, with the companies, uh, to uh, either develop methodologies, because some of the transformations are still in the in methodology development stage, but also very much during the data collection um, uh, phase. And then also once the assessments have been uh, conducted to see what strategical change or what shifts do companies and the industry as a whole need to make in order to reach the transformational change that we want to see. Next slide, please. As I said, um, we are building a, a movement um, and we are uh, rapidly growing uh, the World Benchmarking Alliance. As I said, we are an alliance, which means, and here it says 120, but currently we are on over 150 allies, um, which are all, um, which are organizations from all different parts of the globe, but also representations of different uh, types of organizations and stakeholders that we believe are important to drive this change. So these are civil society organizations, uh, uh, financial institutions or investor coalitions more broadly, but also uh, benchmarks, uh, re reporting and uh, uh, frameworks and standards and other platforms, because we believe that we don't want to replicate what's already there. We incorporate and um, and uh, partner with initiatives like, for example, CDP to make use of the standards and the disclosure mechanisms that are already in, pl in place, but also recognizing that some of these uh, disclosure mechanisms uh, need additional uh, in, uh, aspirational indicators if we really want to see transformation happening. Next slide. So these are an example of some of our allies, uh, which we partner up with, um, and, and you can see here CDP, but also science-based targets is an important ally because uh, for our methodology development work, we, uh, we incorporate the science-based targets um, uh, as an initiative. Uh, and we use, make use of business platforms like, for example, We Mean Business, but also the World Business Council and the International Chamber of Commerce. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we want to empower a, very, uh, a variety of stakeholders. These are companies like yourself with giving uh, information about a peer group analysis, but also individual analysis of where your company sits compared to others, but also where uh, we believe leadership is happening in the, in the uh, various industry that we analyze, uh, analyze but also um, come up with recommendations of what we believe need to be the next actions uh, in uh, the transformation and how the leaders uh, could could be um, informing other companies as well uh, in taking the right strategic directions. Um, other stakeholders, including financial institutions and investor coalitions, uh, as I mentioned, civil society, because we believe that the work we do need to trans uh, need to translate. Uh, what society expects of, of companies uh, in these transformations. Um, governments, we have policy units in, in the US, in Europe and in Asia, where our the benchmarks and the data that we provide inform uh, policy uh, discussions and decisions. And in the end, individuals in terms of uh, employees, uh, where do I want to work, but also individuals, for example, through their pensions, where do I want to invest my money in? Next slide, please. Yeah, okay, the last one, sorry. <laughs> so as a, a hopefully everyone is aware, the climate change represents the single biggest threat to the development at the moment. And we really need to see a transformation if we want to keep the global warming to well below degrees, not two degree scenario. This means that our benchmark will actually measure individual corporate progress against the uh, the goals of the Paris Agreement. 
and will uh, then also give an insight into how the companies are doing, where they are active in which regions, and then come up with uh, leading practices, but also with risks and opportunities to see what we believe that needs to be happening and uh, uh, when we will do the assessments again, as um, mentioned by Claire, we launched the automotive benchmark last year in 2019 and this year will be an update of the assessments um, and then we uh, we are measuring what progress has happened over the last year but also what trend is uh, are we seeing in terms of development where do we believe more action is needed and also what what might hamper uh, certain progress from happening um, yeah and we believe that the engagement with all the stakeholders that i mentioned before uh, is critical in order to meet the goals of the parents agreement Next slide. So as uh, we said, the, the World Benchmarking Alliance uh, for this specific benchmark, we partner with CDP by operationalizing the ACT, the Assessing Low Carbon Transition Methodology. Overall, we will we have the ambition to rank 450 companies um, against the goals of the Paris Agreement, and we will do so by 2023. Currently, we are, have uh, performed an analysis of the automotive sector as well as the electric utility sector, and we're currently working on the oil and gas sector. Um, we, uh, as I said, we will use the various high emitting uh, uh, industry methodologies for our benchmark developments, and, uh, and Claire will elaborate on what elements form part of that assessment, but it will look at and what is the strategy, target setting, but also very much investment business models and how is management and culture within the company um, conducted in order to, to reach these, these goals and targets. Next slide. I think it's yours, Claire. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And Great. if any Thank questions, you. we can uh, do it at the end. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Vicky. So to recap, what is the ACT initiative? Um, as we uh, outline here, the ACT, ACT, which stands for Assessing the Low Carbon Transition, was established as a joint voluntary initiative of ADEM and CDP. It's an accountability framework and methodologies to assess how a company's strategies and actions contribute towards the Paris Agreement mitigation goal. There is analysis of company data against quantitative and qualitative indicators, and the indicators are weighted differently depending on the sector. The analysis um, undertaken with the sector specific methodologies then results in an ACT score. And outputs today under the initiative are the ACT framework, which is published and available on the website, sectoral methodologies to assess companies from high climate impact sectors, and assessment for high impact companies. So this graphic demonstrates how we work from the Paris goals to assess company alignment to a low carbon transition. And to summarize, the goal of the Paris Agreement of staying under a two degree warming has led to the identification of a global carbon budget and mitigation scenario by the IPCC that we must comply with in order to meet this goal. The global scenario is then divided into scenarios for high impact sectors via the International Energy Agency's energy technology perspectives and the sectoral decarbonisation approach developed by the Science Based Targets Initiative, which then allows it to be divided further down to company level. ACT will then assess the company's progress towards various indicators, including their target, to deliver a rating highlighting the company's progress towards a low carbon transition. So, as mentioned um, earlier, the, the initiative developed sector specific methodologies and under the ACT framework, um, this is developed, the process um, consults various stakeholders across the sector, so industry and wider stakeholders, to inform where attention should be, a focus, should be focused for the sector in question. So we'll go into more detail on the automotive sector shortly, but why sector-based methodologies? So we, we uh, develop sector-based me methodologies to know if a company is doing the right thing or is doing enough on climate requirements for the sector in question. 
So climate scenarios tell us uh, that staying within two, two degrees of warming is possible with technologies we have already or will, that will be with us soon. But the different sectors have different contributions to make to, um, to fulfil this. So, for example, with retailers and electric utilities, they're both critical actors in the transition to the low carbon economy, but the actions they need to take are very different. So electric utilities can provide zero carbon energy to power the economy. Retailers can catalyze sustainable production and consumption choices both up and down their value chain. So different sectors will need different strategies. They need to implement different technologies. They contribute more or less to global emissions and have greater or lesser potential to reduce their emissions or catalyze emissions reduction throughout the economy. And through the process of consulting the stakeholders outlined on this slide, we then compile a sector methodology that we think um, relates to the ambition needed for that sector. So, you may be aware of various initiatives uh, associated with both CDP and the World Benchmarking Alliance. Um, to outline how the ACT methodology relates to some of those wider initiatives, this methodology is distinct from other autos work um, that you may be aware of from CDP, but it shares some commonalities. So, for example, this, if um, your company is a CDP disclosure, disclosure, the CDP disclosure data is used wherever possible in the assessments. I'll show an example of this later in the presentation of the, um, the assessment tool. We also draw on the science-based targets initiative. The ACT methodology references the sectoral decarbonisation approach and having a science-based target um, can be included within the ACT in indicators. The CDP Investor Research Team published an autos report in 2018. It uses different methodologies, though there are some common indicators. Um, however, this research is designed to specifically meet the needs of investors and the full report is not public. And similarly, the information from the supply module in disclosure used by the CDP's supply chain program is confidential and therefore this information is not used in these assessments. So to outline the time frame of this project, assessments are currently underway and will be completed this month and into early October. Outreach to the 30 companies um, that will be in, included in this benchmark has begun and will continue throughout the process. There is opportunity to complete free training on the ACT framework and methodology process, which we'll share uh, the link to after this call. The team collects publicly available data and pre-populates an assessment template with company-specific data, which diverges from our usual disclosure principle. And therefore, and then companies are later given the opportunity to validate the data which we collect on you. This will also happen this month in September and into early October. Due to the project timelines, we have quite a short window for companies to validate the data. We're allowing for two weeks per company and we'll communicate this again after the call, at which point we just ask um, that you flag any issues if you see any and we can discuss a feasible time frame jointly. Um, we'll, I'll also share the full list of the sample companies after the call as well, the 30 companies. You can also find this listed on the World Benchmark Alliance's website. The final outputs will be compiled next month and publication will be in mid-November. Could I just ask everybody on the call to mute themselves as well, please? Um, I Thank you. So next, we'll look in greater detail at the methodology. In this section, we'll look at the framework of an app assessment and the methodology for the auto sector. All of the following information relating to the framework and methodology will be contained. With... Sorry, can I just ask again that everybody mutes themselves, please, if you're not already muted? Okay. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. 
Okay, so yes, as I said, the next sector will look at uh, the framework and the methodology in more detail. All of the following information will be made available after the call also. So what's the point of an assessing low carbon transition methodology? Why do we need this? So ACT takes a holistic view of how ready a company is to transition to a low carbon economy. The assessment framework proposes five guiding questions as the basis to steer the development of ACT methodologies and create consistent ACT ratings across sectors. So the assessment framework remains similar for the development of all sector specific methodologies. The first four questions indicated here expresses the dynamic vision of companies in a transition state as proposed by ACT. So from any commitment made by the company, ACT will then evaluate the associated means that are going to be deployed, so the transition plan, and those that are already in place, so present activity, and then also legacy activity, anything that's happened in the recent past. We'll then subsequently validate that business models are accordingly linked and showing consistency across all of these areas. So for the automotive sector, best practice across the framework would demonstrate that for commitment, the company has science-based targets or suitably ambitious targets for operational and fleet emissions, which have a time horizon that covers at least 80% of the full lifetime emissions of the vehicle fleet. We would expect to see the transition plan, the company's strategic planning details the sales for low carbon vehicles up to the point where they become the dominant technology sold. For present activity, we would expect to see the current investment strategy in new production capacity and R&D places clear focus on low carbon drivetrain technologies and related research. For legacy activity, we'd expect to see that the last five years have witnessed a decreasing trend in vehicle fleet emissions intensity that is aligned with the emissions reductions required in the short term and is achieved through deliberate product development decisions. And then consistency would show that the company's targets, transition plan, present action and past legacy shows a consistent willingness to achieve the low carbon transition. The company does not lobby against vehicle emissions regulations and where possible supports more stringent standards and improved emissions measurements. So the ACT framework guides the ACT assessment process, which is implemented according to the sector specific methodologies. There's a variety of indicators used through an ACT assessment and many data points need to be compiled. Data is then assessed through the different indicators and criteria while keeping the ACT framework in mind. The framework questions guide the entire assessment to determine the progress of a company towards their low carbon transition. So tra traditionally an ACT score compromises three elements, a performance score, a narrative score and a trend score. However, in this instance, we're not compiling a full benchmark for the refresh of the auto assessments. We'll be conducting only the performance assessment element of an ACT score for any company featured in the 2019 assessments. For the new companies in the sample, a full ACT assessment will be undertaken and thus a full score produced. So this will not disadvantage new or previously assessed companies. All outputs will be published reflecting the, the scale of the assessment undertaken. And furthermore, data collection will be undertaken comparably for performance assessments for both new and previously featured companies. And um, just to highlight the scoring system here, so collectively the information um, gathered and assessed represents the rating for a performance score, which is a number from one, which is the lowest to 20, which is the highest. The narrative score, narrative score, which is represented as a letter from E, which is the lowest, to A, which is the highest, and trend, which is either plus for the expectation of an improving score, minus for the expectation of a worsening score, or equals for the expectation of a stable score. So we'll go into some more detail now of how each of these sections of the ACT assessment process is compiled. So the automotive methodology um, has nine modules. It has different indicators within each module according to the sector and module weightings vary across the different sectors and are tailored to the sector in focus. So ACT relies on the development of indicators providing insight into the readiness of an organization to transition. 
And to help this development, the set of indicator modules is used next to the five framework questions. All indicators come from applying those five framework questions to information on various aspects of company operations. And as we cannot collect information about the future, ACT instead relies on information from the present and recent past to answer the five questions. We prefer comparable and verifiable data and look at various spheres of a company's operations, products and external influence to gather information on it. While the five question framework largely follows a chronological pathway from the past towards the future, these modules indicated here bring together the indicators across the relevant aspects of company operations to answer each of the framework questions. And by relating the five framework questions to the information available on a company's investments, actions and strategy, the set of indicators are developed for each sector to benchmark that state of alignment with the low carbon transition and measure how far away companies are from that state. Indicators can be a mix of sector specific and common elements and the weighting attributed to each indicator varies across sectors. This reflects the fact that different sectors have different sources of emissions and different actions to take to transition to the low carbon economy. So the graph presented here shows an example of performance scores across the nine modules of ACT. The width of the bar across the bottom um, row show, indicates the weight of the module in the overall calculation of the performance score. And the height of the bar shows the score that the company has achieved. So weightings for the automotive methodology um, are included here. These um, reflect the weightings for the quantitatively scored modules. So um, you can see here for targets, the, uh, that module has an overall weighting of 15%, for material investment, 2%, for intangible investment, 12%, and for sole product performance, 35%. So the selection of weights for both the modules and individual indicators was guided by the principles of value of information, impact of variation, future orientation, and data quality sensitivity. And as you can see, fleet emissions are a major contributor to the overall score for auto companies. And then on the qualitatively scored indicators, which are management, policy, engagement and business model, you can see here that they carry 36% of the final weight of the performance score. So that's with management carrying a weighting of 11%, supplier 6%, client engagement 4%, policy engagement 6%, and the business model module 9% of the overall performance score weighting. The indicators within these modules also carry their own weighting. And collectively, the scores assigned to the indicators across all nine modules determine the overall performance score and forms one part of the overall ACT rating, which we'll um, cover in a bit more detail shortly. So the benchmark used to assess the companies against um, is uh, will we cover here. The sectoral decarbonisation approach allows a process by which companies can set greenhouse gas um, reduction targets necessary to stay within two degrees of warming. The SDA was developed by the Science Based Targets Initiative and allocates the well below two degree carbon budget to different sectors using detailed sector scenarios developed by the IEA. The sectoral carbon budget is turned into an intensity pathway, which can then be used to determine carbon budgets down to the company level. So for the automotive sector, the sector benchmark, the default default the default sector benchmark used for the assessments is based, as mentioned, on the, the sectoral decarbonisation approach um, using the IEA ETP series. So we use the below two degrees scenario, um, which deals with passenger light duty vehicles, and the sector is drawn from and used as a default. The company benchmark is the company allocated decarbonisation pathway. The company is allocated this pathway from the sector decarbonisation pathway of which there are different pathways for different countries and regions. The extent to which a company is tied to a scenario in any one country is proportional to its sales in that country. Thus, the um, company benchmark is geographically weighted. This weighting applies to modeling for sales growth, passenger density, and annual travel distances. 
but it does not apply to vehicle performance, so fuel economy and emissions intensity. This is because the sector has a high trade intensity, making this company influence factor less dependent on location. The allocation mechanism, as defined by the sectoral decarbonisation approach, is the convergence mechanism. And this allocation takes the company's well to wheel emissions intensity in the initial year and converges it to the sector's emissions intensity in 2050. Thus, companies starting from a lower intensity will have a shallower decarbonisation pathway than companies starting from a higher intensity. In this way, past action or inaction to reduce intensity is incorporated. And the figure one illustrates the transition of global light duty vehicles. So as mentioned previously, um, we collect the data for this assessment and then we share it with companies to validate. So we collect publicly available data and pre-populate the assessment template, which I will um, demonstrate shortly. So we know for CDP disclosures that the 2020 disclosure has just been submitted, so we'll use that data wherever possible. Many data points need to be gathered for the, for the assessment, so we source from various locations and principally rely on publicly available data. So we've worked out that we can access publicly available data to cover most of the major markets. Where indicators use third-party data sources as the default option, companies may provide their own data if they can provide um, a justification and reference, and information about its verification status as well, and any assumptions used in the calculation methodology. I'll outline, as mentioned, in the data collection template where this information could be shared with us. So for companies assessed last year, we also review the relevance of data collected during that assessment and any feedback that any companies gave us during last year's assessment, we also aim to integrate. All data um, used will be presented to companies for validation in a comprehensive data collection format, which I will show you now. So here you can see the um, data collection template. This um, includes all of the nine ACT modules along the bottom tab. So you can see their targets, material investment, intangible investments, all product performance, management, and so on. Currently, um, you're viewing the management tab. So you can see here the um, questions within this, the management module and each of the indicators referenced here. This also shows you what reference documents were used to populate this data so that you can um, read back to where the information came from. All of the reference documents used is contained within the tab general, the first tab, so that you can link back to the documents we've been using. And then you can also see there's also a column here for companies to add any comments on the information supplied. So if you would like to um, provide any different data or additional data than that which we've used, you can add this to the comments box. You can re reference any other um, comments or issues with the data in that box as well, and also add any references to data that you want to share with us in that column also. And finally, um, in column G, you can see here where the data that we've used references any CDP data and to what extent that is used also. Sorry, I think um, I'm just going to meet the Okay. So when we share the data collection template with you, we'll also share further detailed guidance on how to navigate it and use it, and also will be available for calls to discuss in more detail, should that be required. And then finally, just to um, reference the final parts of a full ACT score, so the narrative assessment and trend assessment. The narrative assessment summarises the full conclusions of the analysis undertaken during the performance assessment. So it includes reflection on the performance score results and any additional indicators to support um, any of the review of that, which are less fit to be analysed quantitatively. 
The information is then analysed with four criteria in mind, so business model and strategy, consistency and credibility of the data collected so far, any reputational um, issues for the company and any risk for the company. So the um, along the top here, you can see the, the table. This is the maturity matrix for assessing the business model and strategy part of a narrative assessment. And the maturity matrix, which is used in various areas of an act assessment, um, positions a company by assessment as to whether we think the practices demonstrated by that company are basic, standard, advanced, next practice, or already fully low carbon transition aligned. And as mentioned, this process reflects on the five guiding act framework questions and assigns an associated narrative score for the company ranging from A to E. Then we have the trend score. This is where we assign scores relative to where um, we think a company will be headed in the very near future. So aiming to forecast changes in the company's alignment with the low carbon transition by answering the question, will the company's act score improve, worsen or stay the same if repeated in the near future? So we analyse forward looking information collected during other parts of the act assessment. So performance score and analysis narrative. And we're looking for strong evidence that the company's act score would change or not in the near future. All possible major events which have the potential to affect the company's alignment to a low carbon transition should be considered for the trend score. So um, the following section looks at how the assessments will be conducted, the timings and what will happen with the results. It'll also detail how we hope companies will get involved throughout the process. So looking back to the timeline that we're working to, we'll share this as I mentioned afterwards also, um, but as mentioned, the, the data will be shared with the companies for validation shortly and into early October, um, alongside the training materials and information which supplies background on the ACT methodology and why the assessment is conducted as it is. Once assessments um, have been shared with companies, they will allow two weeks um, for data validation um, and, as mentioned, will be available during that time to consult if there's any queries about the data shared. The final outputs then being compiled in October and published in November. So findings from the analysis will be produced reflecting trends identified within the sector as a result of the data collection and analysis undertaken via the company assessments. A publicly available score summary will be produced reflecting the overall results for each company. And there will be wider communication of the climate and energy benchmark via the World Benchmarking Alliance at strategic events on um, and online. So in summary, companies will receive training on ACT. Um, as mentioned after this call, I'll share links to the e-learning materials which are publicly available. We'll also share a recording of the webinar should anybody want to refer back to this. Access to company relevant uh, public data collected by the analysts. So this will be shared during the data validation when we'll share all of the data collected on your company in the data collection template opportunity to then validate this data and provide supplementary information as preferred, Opp opportunity to review um, results for the company pre-publication, and also then opportunity to include quotes or testimonials in media releases or the final report. We'll also um, share with all companies, obviously, um, information about any relevant attempt uh, relevant events related to this research, um, where we're also uh, open to engaging companies to discuss the findings with us there. So as um, highlighted throughout, ACT provides training and consultancy on the next generation approach to assessing and benchmarking climate progress. And as such, we'll hope you'll be an active part of this process. So um, immediate next steps for companies are as follows. So review the follow-up material to reinforce the understanding of the assessment process and data collected. Um, in due course to validate data within the allotted time frame, and to access guidance from us on this process. So as I mentioned, we will be available 
um, to support with the data validation process should there be any queries there um, via email or we can also set up individual calls with companies to support with the data validation process. The publication and launch will be in November. I've outlined here the uh, main contacts to um, to reach out to both within CDP and the World Benchmarking Alliance. So that's myself, Claire Prescott, I'm the manager of this initiative within CDP and our colleagues highlighted here within the World Benchmarking Alliance. You can also, um, if you're a CDP uh, disclosure member, contact your account manager um, and we'll provide all of these contact details after this call also. I'll now open up to any questions that we might have. Um, so please do feel free to unmute yourself and raise any questions. Claire, there are a few questions in the chat. I don't know if you've seen them, but just trying to see if they've all been addressed. Um, one question is, how is it different from science-based targets initiative. Um, I can't okay. see who answered it because there it's a number and not a name. Apologies for that. Um, but maybe, um, hey, you've talked about the science-based targets initiative, but I'm not sure if the question was answered. Um, okay. um, yeah, I can go into a bit more detail on that. And similarly, um, we can share some more information afterwards. But we, um, so we, we use the sectoral decarbonisation approach, as mentioned, which is developed by the Science Based Targets Initiative. And in that, uh, in our assessment of targets within the ACT assessment, um, it is a similar analysis process to the target analysis within the Science Based Targets Initiative. And we, um, we align with our colleagues there within the Science Based Targets Initiative as well on how they assess targets so that we have a, a good understanding of the similarities and any divergence in approach on target assessment so that we can uh, reflect that when we assess targets within the ACT assessment process. Obviously, the target assessment within the ACT methodology is embedded within a wider assessment process, but we do have a good understanding of both methodologies applied and how, um, as I mentioned, how they're similar and any minor divergences so that that can be reflected in our ACT assessment of a company with a science-based target. And if a company does not have a science-based target, um, will demonstrate within the ACT assessment how they could benefit from setting one and where any gaps are within their own target setting and what the recommendation would be to increase the ambition there within the target setting. Hopefully that answers the question, but um, yeah, welcome to receive more uh, in email or you know, immediately now if you want to elaborate further. The question came from Mr. Anand Marate. Uh, so, um... Thank you for the question. I hope it was answered. And you also, and there was another question on uh, whether we will provide the slides and the recording, um, and we will provide all materials uh, after the close of the webinar. Yes. Great. Okay. Well, if there are no further questions now, um, I think we'll conclude there. Thank you, everybody, again, for joining. As mentioned, all of the um, supporting information will be shared after the call. We're also repeating the call um, tomorrow afternoon for any colleagues in different time zones. If you wish to share with any colleagues uh, in further offices and or anybody else of relevance within your company, please do feel free to do so. But as mentioned, we will also share a recording um, and all supporting materials that can be distributed to relevant colleagues um, as you wish afterwards. So thank you again for joining and we'll be in touch in due course. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, thank you all. Bye bye.